Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. Today we're going to be looking at how to transition from indoor to outdoor climbing. Now this show is designed for people at the beginning of their climbing career. People who sport climb and boulder indoors but want to take their skills to real rock. We're going to be looking at some of the essential gear you need to make that step. Like many climbers, I started my climbing journey in an indoor wall in London. I walked in and almost overnight it changed and took over my entire world. Now, although I liked indoor climbing, it wasn't enough for me. I'd seen pictures of sport climbing and bouldering outdoors. I wanted to learn the skills to get into the big mountains. But to do that, you have to start going outside. Now, I reckon people skills play an important part in this process. I'm going to assume that you've been climbing in a gym for a while and you're starting to get to know the people and that's the key. Ingratiate yourself into that community, be eager to learn, be humble and get to know the people who are going outdoors. There's always groups willing to head off on a weekend or an evening weekend session bouldering. Get in with those people, show willing to learn and they'll help you on your way. Now you can join groups and there are courses which we'll chat more about in a minute but personally I reckon it's all about learning from the people around you. A climbing wall is a little bit like a bar. The more you go in there, the more you talk to people, the more people are willing to talk to you back. Now a good place to start is this book here. Uh, we don't actually sell this on the Epic TV shop but it's a fantastic place to start rock climbing. I bought one almost immediately and it's a bit like a bible. Because the problem with learning off other people is they're not always right. People think they're right but often techniques and habits and bad habits come into play. So you want to double check what you're learning. Listen to multiple people, read that book and get an understanding of what you're learning from the people around you. So you've found the group of people that you're going to learn from and you're outdoors, let's say, at Sport Climbing Crag for the first time. Now, before we chat about the gear you need, we do need to look at the differences between your indoor wall and your outdoor crag. Now, possibly when you started climbing, you've been top roping a lot of routes. So you've got your climbing wall, there's a rope that runs through an anchor system at the top and you just tie into it, your B-layer clips into it and off you go. When you go outdoors, that doesn't exist. There isn't that gym style setup. You have to build it yourself if you want to top rope. Now, usually you can go around to the top of a crag and set up a rope. And we're not gonna go into anchor building and how to do that in this show. And this is one of those things you need to learn from the people around you. Be very careful if you're walking around at the top of the crag because obviously you might fall off, but also you can knock rocks onto people below. And a quick sort of just hint, if you're going to go top roping, don't just sit on one route all day because it's unbelievably annoying for everybody else who turns up at the crag. Top rope a route a few times, speak to the people around you and move on if necessary and find another climb. It's all about that community kind of feel. Now we're talking about ropes so let's move on to the gear section of this because if you go outside you're going to want your own rope. Sure you can borrow it from someone else but it's one of those bits of kit that is nice to own. So with most of the gear we're going to be talking about the sort of the beginner, the budget option and then an upgrade if you want to step things up a little bit. As a starter rope I would recommend the Tendon Smart Light 9.8mm rope and there's really two things you need to decide with ropes, the length and the thickness. Now generally for your first rope I would go for the 60 meter version of that rope. It's kind of a good middle ground and it hits single pitch sport climbing, single pitch trad climbing and you could use 60 meters in a gym quite easily. The advantage with the Tendon uh, Smart Light is it's very simple but very tough and durable. That 9.8 millimeter diameter means it will stand up to some abuse. It doesn't have treatments, uh, so there's dry treatments that make the rope more waterproof, but as a beginner you don't really need that, you just want a workhorse as a rope. And the best advantage of that rope is it's only 82 euros on the Epic TV shop, so it won't blow the bank. What will blow the bank a bit more is a slightly thinner and lighter rope. I use the Tendon Master 9.2 millimeters, and although it's only a few millimeters difference between those two ropes, it does make a huge difference. The Tendon Master is a lot lighter and a lot smoother through your belay plate. It's also got all the treatment, so if you chuck your rope around in the rain, it's going to stand up to that better. But 
I would go for that budget, more cheaper value option first, because you don't know the kind of climbing you're gonna be getting into yet. And you don't wanna blow all your budget on a rope. Now making that transition to outdoor climbing is really all about lead climbing because that's where the excitement's at. Now again, there's differences between that indoor and outdoor setups. Indoor climbing, the quick draws will usually be in the route already. So there'll be a bolt in your climbing wall and the quick draw will be through the bolt ready to go. And all you need to do is clip the rope in. But that doesn't exist outdoors. Outdoors, you've only got the bolt and you need to put your own quick draws into the route. Now, all you really need to remember about this uh, is rubber rope. So there's two ends to a quick draw, two carabiners. One has a little tiny bit of rubber in it which stops the carabiner moving around too much. That's for the rope. The other end goes into the bolt. There's a few reasons for this. Uh, the other end is a bit looser so it can move around on the bolt a bit better and it doesn't twist off the hanger. But also it's very important to keep the same end in a bolt or the rope. And that's because when uh, a carabiner is into a bolt and it's moving around, it can get little chips and abrasions in the surface of the carabiner. You wanna keep those chips and abrasions as far away from a rope as possible. So whatever way you put your carabiner in, so your quick draw in, make sure it's the same way every single time. So which quick draws do you need and how many do you need? Well. Part of learning and doing this whole climbing thing is starting to slowly build up your gear collection. So you don't think you need everything straight away. I recommend you get at least six quick draws and then you can share the quick draws with someone else. So they can bring six, you can bring six, and you don't have to spend that much. However, if you want your own set of quick draws, go for about 12 at least, and you'll need more for longer routes, but you can build that up slowly. So there's kind of two schools of thinking with sport quick draws. You can go for an all round one like these I've got here. This is the Black Diamond, Diamond Positron. Uh, this is an old model, but we do sell the new model on the Epic TV shop, which might be on screen somewhere. This is a great all round quick draw. It's kind of medium weight. The carabiners are sort of medium size and the dog bone, this bit in the middle, is fairly thin. The advantage of an all-round quick draw is it's an all-rounder. You can use it for lots of different aspects of sport. You can take it trad climbing, you can take it sport climbing. I've used these mountaineering all the time. However, if you just are dedicated into sport climbing, you might want to look at a dedicated sport climbing draw. For example, the Wild Country Proton Quick Draw. A few subtle differences, these are heavier, but because of that extra weight, you get extra thickness to it. That dog bone in the middle is really wide, so you can grab it when hauling up and red pointing a route. And the carabiners themselves are very wide and ergonomically designed to fit into your hand and clip easily. The downside of that is the weight situation. So they are heavier and they are bulkier, but that doesn't usually matter with sport climbing because the drawers are usually in place or you put them in place when you're red pointing. So you want that durability in the wall and the weight doesn't matter so much. So have a think about what you might want. Personally, I'd recommend going for those do it all uh, quick draws to start with because then you can get different quick draws for different aspects of the sport as you develop. So let's move on to talking about the actual climbing itself. Now, when you first go outside, you're gonna find it more complicated and probably trickier than an indoor route. That's because indoors, there's usually big colors. You can see exactly where you're going and which ones are handholds and footholds. Whereas if you're on a cliff, everything kind of looks the same and it takes experience to learn what is a handhold, what can you stand on, and what works best for you. And footwork is gonna be something that crops its ugly head because you need better footwork arguably outside than indoors and because of that i would recommend getting a dedicated outdoor climbing shoe indoor climbing is rough on shoes they get battered they get scraped and they start to sort of lose their shape and i just personally like an indoor and an outdoor shoe and for my outdoor shoe i prefer something a little bit stiffer so i can stand on the smaller footholds uh, these are hugo's katana la sportiva katana shoes lovely all round flatter profile and quite stiff so you can really lay that power down also check out the Scarpa Vapor V shoe and my own personal favorite, the Boreal Mutant. Fantastic all round great sport climbing shoes with that extra support for outdoor climbing. Do you need a helmet 
when outdoor climbing? Well, there really isn't a right or wrong answer with this. Yes, it is far more sensible to wear a helmet and there's certain situations when wearing a helmet is essential. But you'll see a lot of people not wearing a helmet for sport climbing, but they will wear it for trad climbing. Why? Well, it's generally because sport climbing is fairly safe. Hitting your head is quite unlikely. And if you're single pitch climbing, the danger of rock fall is less. But you really need to base this on where you are. You have to make a judgment call. If the crag is loose and there's rocks flying around, wear a helmet. If the bolts are quite spaced on a sport route and you think you might hit your head, wear a helmet. And if it gives you confidence, just stick it on. No one is gonna judge you, but also no one's gonna throw you out if you're not wearing one. It's up to you. So what do you get? Well, I would personally avoid the super fast and light helmets uh, just because they can be a bit flimsy, especially if you're chucking it into bags. Go for something mid-range. So the new Petzl Meteor helmet has been redesigned and is just Perfect. Love that helmet. Also, the Black Diamond Vapor is a fantastic place to start. A little bit more expensive, but it has got a really nice shape to it that does suit people better than the Meteor. Up to you. Bit of grade talk quickly. When you transition from indoor to outdoor, you're probably gonna notice that your level goes down a little bit. Yes, maybe you can cruise 6B in an indoor climbing wall, but you get on a 6B on a crag and you'll struggle. And that's, as I said before, just because everything feels different and you're gonna be a bit nervous and unsure of what's going on. Don't panic, it will come back and it will reach that indoor climbing level. Watch people climbing who are better than you. It's the best way to do it. Check out their foot movements. See the holds they're going for compared to you and learn from them. And if you fall off during a route, don't just give up and come down. Work that section and get it nailed before going down and giving it another go. Now with all this kit we've been talking about, you need somewhere to put it, to carry it with, because there's nothing more uncool than turning up at a crag with different bags and ropes hanging off you. Now there are loads of backpacks to be had on the market, but there are some specific climbing backpacks. For example, the Tendon Gear Bag 45 litre or the DMM Flight. And as the name suggests, the flight fits into an overhead compartment on a plane. Now these bags are great because they have lots of compartments and spaces to put all of your sport climbing gear. There's rope section, there's quick draw bits, there's sections for your guidebook, and it's all in one easy to reach place. And the advantage is if you've got a small house, you can just keep it in the bag between trips, which I find quite useful personally. So if you've been rope climbing indoors, you've probably got or at least been using a belay device similar to this ATC style. But when you go outside, you might want to consider upgrading to an assisted braking devices. Now these are mechanical bits of kit that kind of help grab the rope. So if something terrible happens, you have an accident, or if you lose concentration and let go of that dead rope and the climber falls off, then the device is meant to catch the climber. Now obviously these are not foolproof, never let go of that dead rope, but it's just there as an extra bit of security for you. So which one do you go for? Because there are quite a few on the market. Now, whatever climbing crag you go to, you'll see grigris being used. Uh, they are fantastic, they're brilliant, but they are really tricky to use, especially with giving slack. And as a beginner in the world of outdoor rock climbing, trying to struggle with a new unfamiliar device is the last thing you want. Check out the ClickUp Plus or the Wild Country Revo. These are assisted braking devices, so will help you stop the climber, but they're a little bit simpler to use and more intuitive, especially if you're used to the ATC. Do check those out. I've used them both and I'm pretty impressed with them. Don't get me wrong, the Grigory is an amazing bit of kit, but that's perhaps for more intermediate climbers. Now today we talked a lot about sport climbing, but what happens if you're a bouldering machine and you want to take your strength to the real rock? Well, it's pretty simple really. Buy a guidebook, and the same thing relates to sport climbing as well. Buy a guidebook for the area that you're in, check out the crags, and in a guidebook it will tell you where to go, the kind of boulders and sport climbs on offer, and the logistics of how to get there and where to stay. It's a good place to start. But we live in the 21st century, we've all got smartphones, and 27 crags have worked out this way of putting guides, putting topos, onto your phone. We sell the cards at the Epic TV shop. I think it's 40 something euros. It's really quite good value. You just put it on your phone and you've got hundreds of bouldering and sport climbing areas at your fingertips. But what bouldering kit do you need? 
Well, honestly, not a lot. You've probably got most of it. You've got your chalk, you've got your shoes. All you really need to buy is a bouldering pad. And this is where it starts to get tricky because there seems to be hundreds of them on the market. Again, I go for simplicity and toughness. When you start bouldering, you're gonna be going with other people. You're gonna have a pad party, share it around, add your pad to the pile of other pads. So you want something that's not too big, not too clumpy, but it will last you a long time. I really recommend the Psyche Dual Fold Pad. It does all the things above, is simple, is easy, is super tough, but the price is pretty ridiculously good. It's only 115 euros on the Epic TV shop. They last a long time and it's gonna be the staple of your bouldering collection. So do go and check that out. So there you go. Climbing outdoors can feel like a heck of a leap, especially if you're a sort of urban, intercity climbing wall rat. It's hard to get outside and do the real rock thing. I mentioned courses earlier on in the show, and there are some excellent ones out there, depending on where you live in the world. If you're in the UK, the BMC run excellent how to lead courses and outdoor skills courses, so do go and check that out. Or you can look up local guides and climbers in the area, pay some money and they can teach you. But honestly, there's no substitute for doing it with your mates. They'll show you, they'll show you how to do it, they'll help you through your progression, and it's kind of fun. So there you go, hope that helped. Uh, all the gear we've been chatting about today is linked in the description below, so have a little look. And let me know your journeys. How have you find this transition from indoors to outdoors, and has this video helped you in that step? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.